the primary specification that an engineer will provide about the concrete itself is how strong it is, how much compressive strength it has, that is resistance to crushing, and that's measured in pounds per square inch. The concrete on this job is specified to be 3,000 pounds per square inch. The engineer does not specify how to mix the concrete to get that strength. That's left up to the batch plant, the ready-mix plant, the concrete supplier. In this case, concrete service. Now what the engineer does not specify besides the mix design is how you build your forms. So a couple of challenges that the contractor faces as he's looking at the engineer's plans and seeing the size, the cross-section of the footing and of the wall and where the rebar goes is how do I form that? So you can see here my solution to forming two mats, one on the bottom, one on the top, suspended with, a, with the verticals suspended as, at a specific distance. That is one particular method that I use that you've seen us working on for the last week. You saw us putting the gravel in the bottom of, these, of where the footing was going to go to control the size of the depth of the footing. A contractor has to look at the plans and estimate how much concrete he's going to put on the job even though he has not built the forms yet. And then you have to find a way to build the forms to co comply as closely as you can with the size that you bid the job um, that you use to bid the job off of the plan. Sometimes it's tricky. This footing ranges from four feet wide to probably four feet six inches wide because I'm dirt bank pouring it on the back. Concrete volume is measured in cubic feet but ordered in cubic yards. What I mean by that is measuring up a footing or a wall is done by converting the measurements into feet or fractions of a foot and then multiplying length times width times height, converting it back to yards so that you can call the batch plant, in this case, at Concrete Service, I'll talk to Duke, he's the guy that takes the orders, and say, Duke, I need this number of yards. I'm gonna hip shoot and say that for these footings, oh, I'll just take a swing at it and say there's gonna be about 40 yards in these footings. But there's a particular method that they're used to using at the batch plant. You tell them how many yards. You tell them how, what the mix design is. And if you need to talk to them about how to get 3,000 pound mix, you talk to them. Cement, rocks, sand, and water are the four primary components of concrete. And each of them profoundly influences and sort of changes the characteristics of the batch. All of the other components that can be added to a concrete batch are known as admixtures. Admixtures can change the color, the permeability of water, in other words, they can make it more waterproof, they can change the compressive strength, they can affect cracking, they can speed up the chemical reaction or they can slow down the chemical reaction, they can uniformly distribute reinforcing throughout the whole mix rather than just at the locations of the rebar, they can enable concrete to resist freeze, thaw cycles. There's just a wide, wide range of developments and advances and really science that has been brought to bear on concrete because it is after all the most versatile and widely used building material on the planet and for a lot of reasons in a lot of applications it's the only way to go. One of the things that you're going to talk about to the batch plant, to the dispatcher, is how you're going to place the concrete in the form. If the form is accessible so you can just drive the truck up, put some chutes on, and dump it right out of the front of the truck. By the way, front dumping trucks are awesome. That's one of the things I love about concrete service is they only use front dumping trucks. Or perhaps you have to put it in a wheelbarrow or wheelbarrow it back around the corner and into it. Oh, man, don't do that if you can help it. Or the method of choice now around here is using a pump, a line pump. It's a method of choice because you get exactly the amount of concrete exactly where you need it. You don't break anything driving the truck in. The truck never gets stuck. You don't have to jump him over. The, there's just a whole bunch of reasons. Pumping out of the truck into a wheelbarrow. Let the dispatcher know. Slump. Visualize a cone, a truncated cone. The official way to test slump is to set that cone on a piece of plywood, fill it about a third of the way, and rot it a specified number of times. Don't know what that is, I'm not a concrete tester. Fill it another third of the way, rot it a specified number of times. Fill it to the top, rot it 
a specified number of times, that is plunging a piece of rebar in there, and then strike it off so it's perfectly flat on the top. And then they give that thing about a quarter of a turn and slip that cone-shaped form off. So now that truncated cone of s concrete is unsupported and it slumps. It falls down a certain distance. The distance that it falls down, measured in inches, is the slump of the concrete. Different jobs require a different slump. Over on the bulkheads, as you're going to see, if I poured a high slump mix, a six or a seven inch slump, it's going to be sliding out from underneath those bulkheads. The quantity of concrete is a quantity of money. And you have to decide, how much extra can I afford? And you say, well, why order any extra? Order the exact amount. All these footings are formed on one, two, or three sides with dirt. Dirt is not a precise form surface, is it? So that means the depth on these things is going to fluctuate from, on this footing, from maybe 11 and a half inches to 12 and a half, or maybe 13 inches in some spots. That's a variability in the quantity. The width fluctuates from four foot at a minimum, as specified by the engineer, to as much as four foot eight in a couple spots where the excavator got just a little far back into the hill. So there's a variability in the quantity. So I'm going to take my best guess at the volume of concrete in this footing, measured in cubic feet, converted to cubic yards, which is how concrete is ordered. Now on a footing pour, running short is not the catastrophe that it is on a slab, particularly a hard trowel, tightly finished, burnished slab, or a decorative surface like a sand finish or a stamped concrete finish. Because with those decorative surfaces or a, t a, a burnished, a hard trowel slab, you run short. You run short a yard or a half a yard or two yards and you've got, you know, maybe 60 or 70 or 130 square feet of slab and you're out of concrete and there are no more trucks coming. And you call the batch plant and you say, Man, I need two yards. You send me a two yard cleanup. Cleanup is what you call the truck that is not full. That is the amount you need to clean up or finish the job. That's a cleanup load. So you call the batch plant and say, man, I need a two yard cleanup. And they say, okay, I'm not gonna have a truck for an hour. My next truck gets back, it, he'll be to you in about an hour and 15 minutes. And you go, rats, because I've got this slab laying there. And it's screeded and you're bull floating it and it's gonna be taking an initial set. And by the time the truck gets there and he gets his chutes on, if he can drive up to it, or maybe your pump's gotta wait, and the pump, you gotta pay the pump for standby time. I mean, if he's waiting on your short order, you're paying him more money. Then the truck gets there and you get the concrete in place, but now this concrete is fr fresh and this old concrete is wanting to set up really badly. And maybe the aggregate came out of different parts of the stack and it's slightly different colored. And so when it's done on an exposed aggregate finish or a sand finish, you're gonna have a color variation. Or maybe it's hard troweled and you're continually, as you're trying to finish, because you have to finish that initial load because it's getting hard. You got the machine out there and you swing out into the spot that's soft and it falls down a little. It's just a shipwreck on a, on a surface that's finished. Now, not so bad on a footing, but you always want to order enough. And the only way to order enough is to order a little too much. And ordering a little too much is costing you money that you really don't want to spend. So it produces anxiety. I've got 46 yards. Now, it wouldn't surprise me if it went as much as, you know, 49. It's hard to tell, you know, with dirt grade and extra keyways. But I'll probably order just four trucks, five trucks. I'll order five trucks nine yards each, 45 yards, and then order a cleanup at the end. One of the trucks that gets here, probably order him at about a three inch slump, one of them. Most of them I'll order at about a five inch slump, which is not, I mean, that's just enough water to begin to maybe degrade the strength a little, but it's a nice compromise between strength and workability in my opinion. But I'll order one truck, probably the second truck, to come out at a three inch slump. And out of the truck, I'll dribble him in behind these bulkheads to kind of seal those bulkheads up and put some stiffer mud behind those areas where the forms are a little tender. And then by the time at the end of the job, we've come around the bottom and are pumping up into these steps, that, in that initial sort of sealing uh, concrete at the steps will have taken up, be pretty tough, and will reduce the form pressure on those bulkheads. So I'm gonna order five nine yard loads and then just figure on probably a two or a three yard cleanup which will be poured out of the truck, probably down into the big footing 
or maybe finish up the last two elevations on this stretch right here. Now there are two batch plants in uh, Roseburg in Douglas County. They sell rock, they sell sand, they sell big rocks, and you're going to see examples of all that here on this project. The name that you will find them under when you're ordering the concrete is Concrete Service. Now concrete is concrete, isn't it? And if it's prof professionally batched in a calibrated, well-maintained plant like theirs, it's probably going to be predictable. But here's what's not predictable. The service associated with the delivery of the concrete. There's any number of ways that the service that is connected with the concrete you order is going to make or break you, whether you're a homeowner, a do-it-yourself owner, a do-it-yourselfer, or a professional. Umpqua Sand and Gravel is a family-owned, multi-generational now, family-owned business that's been competing successfully with a nationwide, big-time consortium. Not only competing, but beating. That's admirable in and of itself, isn't it? I mean, that doesn't just happen because you want it to happen. I don't know how many 4-H and FFA steers and lambs and hogs they buy at the Douglas County Fair every year, but it's a lot. I'm not sure how many family wage jobs they provide, but it's a lot. And it's long-term relationships that I see happening with their employees, long enough for me to get well acquainted with the truck drivers. Besides those things that are fairly public, I see them all the time sponsoring little league teams and other sporting teams, donating and providing materials to Eagle Scout projects. Umpqua Sand and Gravel is showing up as somebody that is part of this community and intends to help the community thrive. So why am I telling you about my batch plant? Because they are providing, at no cost, the concrete and the rock and the riprap that it's taking to do the retaining work on this lot. Think about that for putting your money where your mouth is. Think about that for identifying a worthwhile cause and getting behind it. If you do live here or anywhere around here, you would be foolish not to use these guys. Not only because their product is tops, but because their service is way better than anything else that you have available to you here. And third, because they are helping me and I'm helping you. So let's, let's close the loop on this. If you're in the neighborhood or you know anybody in the neighborhood, send them to Umpqua Sand and Gravel. Now to the rest of my viewers, the overwhelming majority that don't live in Southern Oregon or who don't order concrete or who or, are or watching this Spec House series just because of the entertainment and education value and not because there's any possibility that you're a concrete finisher or a contractor, will you go to their Facebook page? Will you thank them? Will you let them know that you are receiving value from this spec house series? The things that they are providing here, the concrete and the rock on the sand, are integral to the things that you're learning and that you're, you're valuing and that it's enabling me to do. Just let them know, will you? Because they're really stepping up to the next level in their priority of giving back to the community. And now it is a big community, so thank them. Spend a little time checking out which of the local batch plants really provide service. Now, I'm sorry you don't have access to concrete service, Umpqua Sand and Gravel, but somebody out there takes pride in making your job turn out right like these guys do.